This lecture is about the ordinal logistical regression for sentiment analysis. So this is our problem set up for a typical sentiment classification problem, or more specifically rating prediction. We have an opinionated text document D as input, and we want to generate as output a rating in the range of 1 through k. So it's a discrete rating, and thus, thus this is a categorization problem. We have k categories here. Now we can use a regular text categorization technique to solve this problem, but uh, such a solution would not consider the order and dependency of the categories. Uh, intuitively, the features that can distinguish category 2 from 1, or rather rating 2 from 1, uh, may be similar to those that can distinguish uh, k from k minus 1. For example, positive words generally suggest a higher rating. Now, when we train a um, categorization program by treating these categories as independent, we would not capture this. So what's the solution? Well, in general, we can add order to uh, classify, and there are many different approaches. And here we're going to talk about one of them. It's called ordinal logistical regression. Now, uh, let's first think about how we can use logistical regression for a binary sentiment uh, categorization problem. So suppose we just want to distinguish uh, positive from negative, and then it's just a two-category categorization problem. So the predictors are represented as x, and these are the features, and there are m features altogether. Each feature value is a real number, and this can be a representation of a text document. right? And the y has two values, binary response variable 0 or 1. 1 means x is positive, 0 means x is negative. And then, of course, this is a standard two-category uh, categorization problem. We can apply logistical regression. You may recall that in logistical regression, we assume the log odd of probability that uh, y is uh, equal to 1 is uh, assumed to be a linear function of these features, as shown here. So this would allow us to also write the probability of y equals 1 given x uh, in uh, this uh, equation that you are seeing on the bottom. And so that's a logistic function, and you can see it uh, relates this probability to um, probability of y equals 1 to the feature values. And of course, beta i is our parameters here. So this is just a direct application of uh, logistic regression for binary categorization. What if we have multiple categories, multiple levels? Well, we can actually use such a binary logistic regression program to solve this multi-level uh, rating prediction. And the idea is we can introduce uh, multiple uh, binary classifiers. And in each case, we ask the classifier to predict uh, whether the rating is j or above, or the rating is lower than j. So when y sub j is equal to 1, it means rating is, is j or above. When it's 0, that means the rating is lower than j. So basically, uh, if we want to predict the rating in the range of 1 through k, we first have one classifier to distinguish k versus others. And that's our classifier 1. And then we're going to have another classifier to distinguish k minus 1 from the rest. Well, that's classifier 2. And in the end, we need a classifier to distinguish um, 2 and 1. So altogether, we'll have k minus 1 classifiers. Now, if we do that, of course, then we can uh, also solve this problem. And the logistic regression program would be also very straightforward, as you have just seen on the previous slide. Only that uh, here we have more parameters, because for each classifier, we need a different set of parameters. So now the logistic regression classifier is indexed by j, which corresponds to a rating level. And I have also used the alpha sub j to replace um, beta 0. And this is to um, make the notation more consistent with what we can show uh, in the ordinal logistic regression. 
So anyway, so here we now have basically k minus one regular logic regression classifiers. Each has its own set of parameters. So now with this uh, approach, we can now do rating prediction as follows. After we have trained these k minus one logistic regression classifiers uh, separately, of course, then we can uh, take a new instance and then invoke a classifier um, sequentially to make the decision. So first, let's look at the, the classifier that corresponds to level of rating k. So this classifier will tell us whether this uh, this object should have a rating of k or above. And if its probability according to this logistic regression classifier is larger than 0.5, we're going to say yes, the rating is k. Now, what if it's not as large as 0.5? Well, that means the rating is below k, right? So now we need to invoke the next classifier, which tells us whether it's above k minus 1. It's at least k minus 1. And if the probability is larger than 0.5, then we'll say, well, then it's k minus 1. What if it says no? Well, that means the rating will be even below k minus 1. And so we're going to just keep invoking these classifiers until we hit the end when we need to decide whether it's 2 or 1. So this would help us solve the problem, right? So we can have a classifier that would uh, actually give us a prediction of a rating in the range of 1 through k. Now, unfortunately, such a strategy is not the optimal way of solving this problem. And specifically, there are uh, two problems with uh, this approach. So uh, these equations are the same as you have seen before. Now, the first problem is that uh, there are just too many parameters. There are many parameters. Now, can you count the, how many parameters do we have exactly here? Now, this may be an interesting exercise to do. So you might want to uh, just pause the video and try to figure out the solution. How many parameters do we have for each uh, classifier? And how many classifiers do we have? Well, you can see the answer is that for each classifier, we have m plus 1 parameters and we have k minus 1 classifiers altogether. So the total number of uh, parameters is k minus 1 multiplied by m plus 1. That's a lot, a lot of parameters. So when the mm, classifier has a lot of parameters, we would in general need a lot of data to actually help us training data to help us decide the optimal parameters of the, uh, this such a complex model. So that's not um, ideal. Now the second problem is that these problems, these k minus one classifiers are not really independent. These problems are actually dependent. In general, words that are positive uh, would make the rating higher. And for, for any of these classifiers, for all these classifiers, so we should be able to take advantage of this, uh, this fact. Now, the idea of ordinal logistic regression is precisely that. The, the key idea is just the improvement over the k-1 independent logistic regression classifiers. The, and that idea is to tie these beta parameters. And that means uh, we are going to uh, assume the beta parameters, these are the parameters uh, that uh, indicate the inference of those weights. And we're going to assume these beta values are the same for all the k minus one parameters. And this just encodes our intuition that positive words in general would make a, a higher rating more likely. So this is an intuitively appealing assumption. It's reasonable for our problem setup when we have this order in these categories. Now, in the fact, this would allow us uh, to have two positive benefits. Uh, one is it's going to reduce the number of parameters significantly. And the other is uh, to allow us to share the training data because all these parameters are assumed to be equal. So these training data uh, for different classifiers can then be shared to help us set the optimal value for beta. So we have more data to help us uh, choose a good beta value. 
So what's the consequence? Well, the formula would look very similar to what you have seen before, only that now the beta parameter has just one index that corresponds to the feature. It no longer has the other index that corresponds to the level of rating. So that means we tied them together and there's only one set of beta values for all the classifiers. However, each classifier still has a distinct alpha value, the alpha parameter, the intercept, it's different. And this is of course needed to uh, predict the different levels of ratings. So alpha sub j is still different. It depends on j. Different j has a different alpha. But the rest uh, of the parameters, the beta i's are the same. So now you can also ask the question, how many parameters do we have now? Again, that's an interesting question to think about. So um, if you think about it for a moment and you will see now the param the, we have far fewer parameters. Specifically, we have m plus k minus one because we have m beta values and plus k minus one alpha values. So that's just the basically, um, that's basically the uh, main idea of ordinal logistic regression. So now let's see how we can use such a uh, method to actually assign ratings. It turns out that uh, with this, uh, this um, idea of tying all the parameters, the beta values, we also end up having a, a simpler way to uh, make decisions. And more specifically, now the criterion whether the predictor probability is above, is at least 0.5 or above, and now is equivalent to whether the score uh, of the object is larger than or equal to uh, negative alpha sub j, as shown here. Now the scoring function now is just uh, taking a linear combination of all the, of all the features uh, weighted by beta values. So this means now we can simply make a decision of rating by looking at the value of this scoring function and see which bracket it falls into. Now you can see uh, the general decision rule is thus, um, when the score is in the particular range of alpha values, then uh, we will assign the corresponding uh, rating to that uh, text object. So in sum, in this approach, we're going to score the object uh, by using the features and the trained parameter values, beta values, and this score will then be compared with a set of trained alpha values to see which range the score is in. And then using the range, we can then decide uh, uh, which rating the object should be getting because these ranges of alpha values correspond to the different levels of ratings and that's from the, uh, the way we train these alpha values. Each is tied to some level of uh, rating. Mm -hmm.